Hello and welcome to the 13th lecture in the Asian Development Bank 3IE video lecture series. In this video, I'll be talking to you about evaluating the impact of an education program. The majority of developing countries have made significant progress in achieving the Millennium Development Goal of Universal Primary School Enrollment by 2015. But has all of this increase in enrollments really led to an increase in learning? This is a serious development question. To achieve education outcomes, a variety of programs have been designed. Some of these have focused on increasing the supply of education. So, schools have been built, textbooks have been provided, more teachers have been hired and they've been equipped with pedagogical tools. In recent years, attention has also been paid to increasing the demand for education in low and middle income countries. So, cash transfers have been provided to poor households, vouchers, scholarships, and finally, we've tried to increase the preparedness for education through early childhood development programs and school feeding programs. A recent 3IE working paper which synthesizes evidence from 75 studies on education programs shows that many of these interventions have indeed improved enrollment, attendance, and grade progression. But there is less evidence on what works in increasing learning. Let's move to the specific case of India. School enrollments here are over 95%, but learning continues to remain shallow. Only 47% of students in Standard 5 can read Standard 2 level text, and only 76% of Standard 8 students can read Standard 2 level text. So clearly, learning doesn't improve as grades progress. In this context, an impact evaluation can truly contribute evidence on what works in teaching approaches? I'm going to take the specific example of a 3 i supported impact evaluation which was conducted in Mahindragad and Kurukshetra districts in Haryana, which is a state in northern India. For this impact evaluation, researchers from JPAL collaborated with the government of Haryana. This was an impact evaluation that was conducted of two interventions. The continuous and comprehensive evaluation system and the Learning and Enhancement Program. They're known as CCE and LEP respectively. This impact evaluation mainly looked at children in grades one to four. So what were these programs about? The continuous and comprehensive evaluation system sprung up as a result of the Right to Education Act. In 2009, final exams were eliminated and in its place, this system was introduced. The rationale here is that teachers need frequent feedback on children's learning ability to customize teaching. And children need not be put through an undue amount of stress on account of a final exam because it's a now or never situation where they have to prove their worth. So the system emphasizes frequent and broad-based feedback on student performance and they're assessed on academic as well as non-academic performance which includes you know performance and activities like music, arts, athletics and they use a variety of techniques to assess performance, unit tests, projects and an evaluation of you know child participation in the classroom. Moving on to the learning enhancement program. This has been developed by Pratham, a large Indian NGO, which focuses on improving literacy and numeracy in India. So it's a simple approach. The program involves a quick and rapid oral assessment of children, and then the children are regrouped according to their learning ability and not their grade. So children who belong to the beginner group, these could be children from different grades, cannot identify letters. Then children in the letter group can identify letters, Moving on to children who can identify words, children who can read paragraphs, and then moving on to whole stories. What is significant about this impact evaluation was the component of process monitoring, which meant that the implementation of the program was monitored. And the researchers from JPAL worked with the government of Haryana on reviving the school monitoring system, which was pretty much defunct in the sense that the system included block and district supervisors and field level monitors, but they mainly collected information on inputs. JPAL trained these monitors, and basically this monitoring system emphasizes surprise visits to you know, classrooms, 
extensive questionnaires being administered on inputs, and finally observations of teachers in the classroom. So the researchers went in with a few fundamental questions. Does the continuous and comprehensive evaluation system improve test scores in Hindi and Maths? Does the learning enhancement program improve test scores in Hindi and Maths? Although the program focused on Hindi, they looked at spillover effects on Maths to see if that improved learning or if it didn't. And finally, does the combination of both programs improve test scores in Hindi and Maths? For this impact evaluation, the researchers used a randomized controlled trial. To know more about randomized controlled trials, please watch video lecture 3 in this series. So what the researchers did is that they selected 400 schools. Of this 400, in 100, the CCE program was implemented. In 100, the LEP program was implemented. In another 100, a combination of CCE and LEP. And finally, 100 schools served as a control group, which means that no program was implemented there. This is called a cluster randomized control trial because the randomization is at the school level. And in this case, the cluster is the school and the outcomes are measured at the level of the individual student. And it has what is called a factorial design because there's a treatment arm for each program, as well as a treatment arm where both programs are implemented at the same time. This design allows you to assess the impact of individual programs and how they work when they are combined. The method that was used is this. Basically, the unit of assignment was the school campus. I say school campus because many schools in Haryana share playgrounds. Primary school teachers sometimes report to principals of secondary schools. The unit of treatment, which means where the program was implemented, was the school. And finally, the unit of analysis was the student, because finally we're using test scores of individual students. In terms of timeline, the baseline survey was conducted in the academic year of 2011-12, and finally, program was implemented, and the end line survey was conducted in 2012-13. The primary source of data was test scores in Hindi and Maths, and 10 randomly selected students were tested in each grade. This yielded a total sample of 12,576 students. And finally, the impact evaluation also included surveys of headmasters to collect information on teaching and evaluation practices. So let's take a look at the results. Students in schools that received the continuous and comprehensive evaluation system did not perform significantly better than students in control schools. So basically, the program did not have an impact. They did not do better in Hindi or Maths. The Learning Enhancement Program, on the other hand, had a large, positive and significant effect on basic Hindi reading abilities. This was seen in both oral and written tests. And the program had a larger effect on girls than boys. And combining both programs did had no significant effect on test scores relative to just having the Learning Enhancement Program. So why didn't the continuous and comprehensive evaluation system really work? The process monitoring data showed that the training did not really lead to any change in teaching practices. And surveys of school headmasters revealed that they thought that the requirements were burdensome and time consuming, and the guidelines were just not clear. Overall, the system was not well implemented. Just over 75% of the teachers attended training and only around 40% could show completed evaluation sheets. The Learning Enhancement Program, on the other hand, had a high level of compliance and was very well implemented. So if we were to step back a little and look at the theory of change of the continuous and comprehensive evaluation system, it's pretty straightforward. The teachers receive training, they then frequently evaluate students and based on this information, they customize teaching approach which leads to an improvement in learning. In this case, there are some fundamental assumptions being made about the theory of change. In the case of this particular system, these assumptions were not met. For instance, teacher training being adequate, which was not true in this case. Teachers attending training, which data shows that they did not. Only around 75% attended training. And finally, teachers having the time and resources to implement the program here again, they were expected to implement the new CCE techniques during school hours. 
and they were certainly not equipped with pedagogical tools. On the learning enhancement program, if you look at the theory of change, again, fairly straightforward. Teachers are trained. They then evaluate and restructure the class based on learning ability and not the grade. And then they teach at the appropriate level. This leads to an improvement in learning. But here, the assumptions were met in most part. Because teacher training was adequate, Pratham in fact realized midway through the implementation of the program that they need to intensify the training. Teachers did attend the training. The attendance was far higher than the CCE system. They certainly had the time and the resources to implement because they were allocated a special hour to implement this. And finally, they were equipped with pedagogical tools. They had learning materials and prescribed activities to teach at every level. So there are several policy implications from this study. The government of Haryana, for one, has commissioned a detailed review of the system. This is particularly significant given that CCE is being rolled out in various parts of the country. Pratham has used this evaluation to build partnerships with other governments and looking at introducing the learning enhancement program in these states. And all of this would not have been possible unless the researchers had not engaged with the government in such an ongoing and deep way. So, in sum, this impact evaluation highlights that teaching that is customized to the learning ability of children can certainly improve learning outcomes. It also shows the importance of training teachers in the use of pedagogical tools. What this study also highlights is that process monitoring is crucial for ensuring that programs are well implemented. In this case, the data showed why the program worked or didn't work. And finally, an important and valuable lesson from this impact evaluation is that for evaluations to inform policy, you need constant and deep engagement of researchers with policymakers. This can ensure the uptake of research findings. And finally, if we see lasting policy changes being made, this can give children a true education. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found this useful to learn a little bit about evaluating the impact of an education program.